let's get Dave from Department of Labor on uh, to, to do a little catch up uh, catch up date. Uh, good morning, Dave. Good morning, uh, Chris. Good morning, Sabrina. Good morning. So I guess this uh, we'll start with you guys opened your satellite processing centers on Monday. How's that uh, that been going for you guys? Uh, I think everything has been going very well. I'm, I'm quite pleased with everything. Uh, between the uh, the libraries that we've been um, moving around to, and then the GCC, we also uh, opened up there for in-person uh, uh, processing. That's going smoothly. We're um, uh, getting all these new claimants that uh, either don't have in, uh, internet or are not capable in and uh, process. Uh, like I said. All we need from them is their, they have to have an email address, their docs, and have to be new claimants. And uh, you, you call in for an appointment, and uh, we'll set you up and get you in and get your process. So Dave, let's say I call in for an appointment today. How uh, backed up or how far ahead would my appointment be? That's a good question. Uh, it, it, you know, it depends. They, they haven't been too far ahead. I mean, it's not too bad. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. So uh, I like to say that uh, we can get you fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. so uh, how and uh, and also the the satellite sites are always available. So today we're in uh, Marizo, and then uh, tomorrow we'll be in Jotnia. So uh, you can uh, make appointments for those places, and uh, we just keep going around to the to the five sites. That are scattered through the island: Mariso, Jotnia, then Agate, uh, Derido, Hagatnia, and then we go back up and start again. Mm -hmm. So, how many? Well, can you give us an update on how many applications uh, have been uh, filed? Uh, sure. We have uh, eighteen thousand two hundred and ninety-seven applications that have been uh, uh, put, uh, put into the system, and. Uh, the employee separations have are 29,459 in the employer module. So uh, we're, we're over 60% filing claims. And, uh, you know, I think that's doing fairly well. And uh, I have some uh, news that uh, we, uh, the system that they sent to DOA this morning, a test file. To, uh, send to the bank and if that goes all well then that will probably put the final touches on the payment module so that we can move forward with the payments mm -hmm. so are you there we'll try and get him back on yeah so he said 18,296 applications in the system 29,459 employee separation module. Kind of need him to clarify what that exactly means. <laughs> Is that him? Okay. <coughs> Dave. Yeah, can you just sorry, I got lost there for no, a minute. I don't no know problem. where I left that. Can you just uh, explain the uh, 18,000 applications in the system and what's the 29,000 employee separation module? Sure. Are those applications or what is that? Okay, the 29,000 is, uh, you remember the very beginning, the employer modules where the employers have to uh, uh, register okay. their company right. and put in their right. uh, employee information okay. of the separations mm -hmm. or reduced hours. So that's where the 29,000, close to 30,000 is. Mm -hmm. uh, and the 18,000 plus the is the number of claims that have been put into mm -hmm. the uh, uh, software uh, people uh, that are actually filing out of the 18,000 how many uh, have errors okay that's a good question I was waiting for that so our staff has been working very hard and uh, as I um, have been saying we were able to clear over 9,200 uh, uh, issue uh, unresolved issue claims so we're down to uh, below 5% of uh, claims that have issues. That's uh, around 1,000. So we've managed to clean a, a lot of those uh, issues that were fairly <laughs> minor and uh, that were uh, just answering incorrectly and things like that. Uh, so 
we're uh, ready to batch a very large amount of uh, files and get those payments off as soon as this we get the thumbs up hopefully today uh, however long that test file it, it uh, takes from the bank and if that is that runs clean then that means that all the fields everything that is set up for EFTs is is cleared to go okay again and so the 92 the 9200 that has uh, been cleared are the ones that are just kind of, they've been vetted they've been approved we're just waiting for uh, to pull the trigger on the payment right the dispersal well, we of checks uh, and electronic transfers yeah uh, we are um, betting continuously we're finding about uh one percent of the total claims have uh suspected um issues and uh, you don't want to say what they could be it could mm. just be uh, uh mistakes by the claimants i, I was just gonna fraud. ask Dave, what's it the most a number of things what's the most common mistake that that people are are I don't want to say mistake. Let's say that some people mysteriously have more than one claim. Uh, I see. <laughs> and uh, with the dollar amounts that we're looking at uh, um, for this first payment that we are trying to go through, and, and I want the public to know, those who made good claims and everything, no problems. Those who have made uh, fraudulent claims, we are going through, we're vetting, and uh, um we are looking at we are putting uh, additional fraud measures into the system on the back end that will uh, also uh, catch some of these duplicates and uh, and you know we're pulling them out and flagging them so uh, it's not going to hold up those who are putting a uh, good claim uh, we also, uh, I, I, I want to thank you guys that uh, we re released a, a fraud a hotline and email address that PUA, P U A dot fraud at DOL dot Guam dot gov. If you suspect any uh, fraudulent claims uh, or, or any kind of tips, yeah, please email us on that and uh, so that we can uh, take a look at uh, those possibilities. So, uh, things are running very quickly we're very close to the end i'm hoping by today if the test runs well that uh we are going to be able to close phase three and move right into uh processing payments so i i i, I see the light i can start touching it and, and uh, we we removed all these uh heavy uh large amount of unresolved issue claims so that released 9200 claims so uh, we're at over 60%. Things are running smooth. So uh, I do want to say we're probably the next 40% are the ones that are the more uh, the people that have more issues. Uh, a lot of the people I go out there and, you know, uh, and I talk to, I put in claims and they said the process was somewhat tough to understand and, uh, it, you know, it, you have to really pay attention, but they got through it and they put in good claims. So uh, uh, we're starting to do the hard claims. We're starting to go in and just take care of the, the people that have issues uh, and have probably have some user errors in it. So uh, I'm feeling much better as far as uh, this tidal wave of, uh, of a project. Uh, I, I'm starting to breathe a little bit, but you know, of course, when that money gets out is when I will really be happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be a huge uh, amount of money that's going to hit out there mm -hmm. at the beginning. So I'm looking forward to seeing that very short, as long as this test case comes out well. Okay, say that the test case uh, goes uh, well today. Um, yeah. How many checks? How many applications are ready to to go to be to be processed for payment oh. and how soon let me give you a range I, I I feel comfortable without you know having everything run and looked at that we're probably going to see 15,000 plus because uh, you know 
as I told you, we have around a thousand unresolved issue claims. We probably going to have about another one percent plus uh, about that are suspect that we're going to put holds on. We're running through the fee, so fifteen thousand plus one so five fairly confident one yeah fifteen thousand plus. So, you know, we're looking at hundreds of millions of dollars going out in one crack. Dave, what is like the average, uh, or can you give us some of the, like the check amounts? Because I remember when you you'd, uh, called us a few weeks ago, you said that we're going to be looking at some people because it's going to be retro. They're going to be getting eight, $9,000 checks. Is that still yeah. accurate? So they're going to be about, uh, I give you a range of around seven to $12,000. And then what can you, uh, that, that's why, you know, Please call back. <laughs> so yeah, today he said that um, they're doing a test, um, and hopefully, if things go well, you can see what did he say? Fifteen thousand. Yeah, checks? he said he said fifteen thousand. One five. He didn't say how soon though. Oh, he was in the middle of. Yeah. Coming. But once they come out, we're looking at uh, checks uh, anywhere between seven to ten thousand dollars. And I thought what was uh, interesting or actually g good news is that um, from the Department of Administration, uh, Edward Byrne, he was on earlier today and he said 90% of those that have had applied actually have signed up for direct deposit. So people aren't going to be, you know, walking around with uh, seven thousand, twelve thousand dollar checks in their hand unless, you know, you're Chris Barnett. Mm. Well, and you know, <laughs> maybe if we if we can just give you know like our our people some hope and everything. Remember a few weeks ago when our friend Daphne Shimizu over at Revin Tax when they got the money as, as far as the distribution because people were like, okay, you've got the money in hand or it's in the account. How long is it going to take to cut mail and for us to like get the checks? They got that out pretty quick mm -hmm. as far as the distribution goes. I think he's back on, right? Yeah, yeah. So let's just get him on. And uh, Dave, so you were talking about the range fifteen thousand uh, checks would be ready to go <laughs> if this if Sorry. it. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, one, one five. five. One five. Fifteen thousand checks would be ready to go if this test uh, run okay. for the payment module is successful. And then what would I guess be the timeline? Okay. We'll just figure it out. I'm gonna take a little break and break this phone here and flip everything <laughs> in the studio. Um just to give you guys a heads up in case it looks different when we come back. That's what happened. Okay, it's uh, KUAM News Takeover containing COVID. Good morning. Keeping you informed, KUAM News brings you Banking 671, brought to you by the Bank of Guam, the People's Bank, and Coast 360 Federal Credit Union. Together, we thrive. KUAM News COVID-19 Takeover on I-94FM is presented locally by Ambrose, Inc. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. With the new challenges we're all facing, First Hawaiian Bank wants to make sure you have access to your financial world. With FHB Online and our mobile app, we hope to make banking the least of your worries. Visit FHB.com slash digital. We hope that you and your loved ones are safe and healthy during the COVID-19 pandemic. It has been a challenging time for all, but now, more than ever, our cancer patients and caregivers need us. Although we are apart, we stand united in the fight against cancer. The American Cancer Society Guam is excited to announce our first virtual Relay for Life. Join us on Saturday, June 27th at 6.30 p.m. on KUAM TV 8, as well as on I-94 FM and streaming on KUAM News digital platform. Cancer does not stop and neither can we. On June 27th, let's celebrate together and fight cancer. Visit RelayForLife.org slash GuamGU to find out be received two days prior, but no later than noon tomorrow standard time on the day of the birthday on weekdays at noon on Friday if a weekend birthday. See KUAM.com for additional regulations. The <laughs> Birthday Club is presented by KUAM and Cold Stone Creamery and Yogurt Dessert Bar. I gotta read this comment here. Chamarita. So sad. Every time the question is interesting, the phone hangs up. <laughs> no comment. Then gets disconnected. All right, Dave, let's try this again. And I said, 
I said gold nuggets of secret information, and and it was off the air. That was it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the code go. word. <laughs> They're jamming it. I feel like oh. you got to just hurry up and say what you got to say really fast, because. <laughs> So I don't. So what? I don't know what you heard and what you didn't hear. So I don't know what to repeat myself or what. So ask me the question. So you had said that with the payment module is uh, there's a successful test run that you would be looking at processing uh, fifteen thousand checks, and then we had then uh, come back and said what would the timeline on that be? But then I think Bree had had a question about. Um, you said that uh, you would be able to process fifteen thousand. But you told us that there were only nine thousand cleanups. Uh, no, the we had um, <coughs> about uh, mm -hmm. nine thousand. We had almost ten thousand unresolved issue claims. Okay. Uh, uh, just a couple couple days ago, and uh, so we managed to clear ninety two hundred of those uh, nearly uh, ten thousand unresolved issues. We cleared them out, so that uh, those are all clean claims now. And now what we're doing, we're just vetting through, looking for possible fraud stuff while the test case gets uh, done today. And hopefully uh, we'll know what the results are. And if, if everything comes out positive with the results, then we're ready to start the batch of file up for payments. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then how long would it take to uh, batch it? Mm -hmm. Batch it and the, we see checks. The, the, the batching is done very quickly. The only part that is the unknown is once we send that file over to DOA, they have to go to the, through the pan, uh, payment management system and draw down the funds that have been uh, given to us. So they need to draw it down to, to, to the, so that the bank has it so that they can then process the EFTs and checks. Mm -hmm. That might take a day, maybe two at the most, depending. It could be faster. That's something that I really don't have any experience on. Mm -hmm. But uh, once I batch it and give it to them, then it's in their hands to uh, process, draw down funds, and uh, uh, send the EFTs to the bank for uh, transfer, and then for them to cut and print the checks. Mm -hmm. Dave, in looking at the, the, the lay of the land, you know, you said you could touch the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Are, are there any other things that could pop up that could further delay oh, getting those sure. checks out to our people? Or is this, this payment module thing that you, you're talking about, is that kind of the last unquestionable? I think that's the last unquestionable. But, you know, this is all new. Anything can happen, as with anything. But, I can't, I, you know, I've been working tirelessly to make sure that everything that I can think of is taken care of. Uh, I, I, I feel fairly confident that uh, we've covered every issue that can be covered and uh, gone back and forth. So uh, I'm hoping that this test case will go smoothly. That's that's going to be the real litmus. Is right. when we, we've given all the information, we set up all the files. It's all put into the program. It's ready to go. So now they they like I said they run a test batch and then that batch goes over to the bank mm -hmm. and then they uh, run it to see it's like a, you know fake EFTs electronic fund transfers right. and if everything's accepted and runs well then we're ready to rock and roll to get these checks out and uh, I can't tell you nobody wants this other than myself and of course the governor and lieutenant governor who are is asking me every day you know how can we help how can we move this forward uh, I want to thank Ed also at DOA for getting his team together and working with uh, uh, our software vendor to get this set up and get this done as quickly as we can. Uh, we, we, I got my team that cleared out all those unresolved issues and are, you know, we're moving with the claims. You know, I can't repeat this enough. I know. This is an online application <laughs> not designed by us. It's DO, US DOL. If you want their money, you have to fill out their application right. online, Dave, and uh, we'll work hard. Uh, there's a couple uh, questions. Sure. First, and this is like kind of going way back. So we know that uh, uh, for the first few weeks, the FPUC and the PUA is a combined nine hundred forty-five dollars a week, right? Sure. So yeah. if I had lost my uh, job, but I made less than nine hundred forty-five bucks a week, do I just still get the nine forty-five? Is that the standard amount for everybody? No. No, uh, uh, 
your, your question's a little off, so I, the, the best way I can answer it is if you're back to work, number one, you have to still be, you have to be reduced in hours. So if you're part-time and you're back to your regular hours, then you're automatically not qualified. Right. So the first litmus test is that you have to either unemployed for a load or back to work at reduced hours. Then if you're back to reduced hours, uh, I get this question a lot. If you have two jobs, one is full-time and one is part-time, and, and you're reduced at the other one, then you have to report your total income for all your jobs. Right. No, and Dave. That total income has to be below 494. Right. So let's say that, yeah, I had a job, totally lost my job. I was getting, you know, 400 bucks a week. Um, when I apply for the Pooh and the FPUC, is the benefit I receive going to be equivalent to what I made at the job I no. lost? It's going to be four hundred. It's going to be nine hundred and forty-five. Right. And so, is that what's kind of leading to the a lot of the questions about the SNAP uh, benefits? Do you get those, Dave? What can you can uh, you, can you speak the only on thing that I at all? Can tell you is that the uh, it's not my program, but I did ask uh, USDOL because the Senator Therese Talahi asked me to ask them, and it came back from USDOL that yes, the benefit assistance from the PUA and FPUC is considered a taxable income and will uh, uh, be reflected in your SNAP, you know, if your income. So if you go over the income threshold because maybe you and your wife are both getting this money, then uh, you may go above the threshold during the time that you're getting my program. Right. And then as soon as you are finished with this program, you may be re-eligible to reapply. And restart right. so uh, that is what I was told by USDOL and uh, that's all I can do is repeat it not being my program I, I don't like to speak about that but uh, it is considered taxable income right both yeah. the FPUC and the PUA right. and you know it's it is so if you're making that much money and you go above the the, the levels the eligibility then you're not qualified and then I guess the thinking is you're making more money than you were yeah. making when you were, you know, had <laughs> a job, a so thing. you can afford to buy some food, I guess. Is, is that, that a bad thing? Right, yeah. And, and then if you're, like I said... If and dude, Dave, I know some people who didn't lose their job, they kind of wish they did because they want to get 945 bucks a week. I mean, well, you know, it's like $1,900 paycheck. But it's not going to last forever. Right, yeah. It's not going to last forever. So be thankful that you got your job and that you're continuing to work. Amen. And if you get called back, then go back and go to work. So there's going to be a lot of unfortunate people that are just going to be unemployed after this program. Is yeah, Dave, we haven't even really begun to look beyond. Oh. I mean, we're, we're still, like, in it, right? We're still in this, so we don't oh, we don't have the perspective. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I have – there's – my job is just going to move from – this program right. to the DW. It's right, just yeah. just an uh, uh, unbelievable amount of work yeah. All right, for Dave. our agency. Yeah. But, uh, thank you, guys. I yeah. appreciate uh, the what, time. What time are you doing the test run? It, it's at DOA now. They just need to take that file and take it over to the bank, uh, as far as I know, and let them process it. So uh, it's in their hands. Yeah, shoot me a text when the when, uh, run is over and let me know how it went so we can talk about it. We'll do that. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Wash your hands. Thank you, Sabri. All right, take care. Okay. Uh, Bye. Take care. Bye. All right. Well, the phone gods answered our prayer. <laughs> the phone gods. It's 8.52. Uh, we'll take a break and come back with more of Containing COVID. And we're coming back with, uh, we had the AG on uh, earlier. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to ask him about the latest uh, lawsuit that was, was filed against his office by Attorney Tom uh, Fisher. But we are going to talk with.